Hi everyone, how are you all doing? Thank you very much for joining me again. So this week I have a gig coming up and I wanted to just go through some of my pre-gig rituals and routines. So normally before a gig, the week leading up to it, I will practice as much as I possibly can, singing and guitar. Mainly singing because you can mess up a couple of guitar notes and get away with it, but if you sing a really bad duff note, then people will notice and they probably will find that funnier than you messing up on the guitar. So I try and keep my voice in check. It's difficult because as I said last week with my other video that you can see right here, I unfortunately contracted some horrible form of virus and yeah, couldn't actually sing very well. The song that I did, I managed to warm up enough for, but I'm not 100% happy with that. But then again, I'm never am 100% happy with my voice. So there you go. So I will normally sing pretty much every day if I can, in the car, driving around. So yeah, constantly trying to keep my voice warmed up and get on the go. On the day of the gig, if I'm driving on my own there, then I will normally warm up in the car on the way there, have a small sort of sing to some songs or and also go through my warm up routines. The difficult thing is I need to try and make sure that I'm warmed up enough for during the gig and then when I'm at the venue, I'll do some very light warm, warm ups um, in the room. Things like um, humming exercises so that I'm not sort of standing there uh, going through my full loud warm-up routine in the middle of the room while everyone else is trying to get on with sound check or trying to get on with other things. The level that I'm playing at at the moment, the kinds of venues that I'm playing at, um, there aren't actually any dressing rooms. So particularly this venue, there isn't any form of area that I can go and warm up in. So I will probably just sit there and it will just be light noises. Talking actually does help you uh, keep your voice warmed up or warm. Um, so I'll be doing things like my scales but humming. So. And normally in a loud environment when someone else is sound checking, you can't hear that. So it's quite a good thing to do to keep your voice on the go, but not too, not standing there annoying everyone. When it comes to guitar, I normally just go through some scales, some things like that, just sitting there whilst I'm trying to warm up, play through a few things. I don't really have a specific warm up routine for my guitar stuff. It's mainly just running up and down the scales or going through, um, or going through a one finger per fret routine like this. Just things like that, just to try and make sure that my hands are warm enough to play on the evening. Again, it's difficult to warm up in the types of venues that I play in because there aren't dressing rooms. There aren't really areas that you can go into to, to do a warm up without annoying someone else, another band or another member of the band that are playing with you or whatever. So you just have to try and make sure that you're still able to warm up, but not get on everyone's nerves, I suppose. I try to avoid things like lager beers, so things like your your Fosters, your Stella Artois, I try to avoid them anyway, but it's um, things like that, your Becks, Grolsch's, things, that, things like those brands, there aren't any specific brands that I'm trying to advertise or not advertise here, but I try to avoid those sorts of lager beers um, before I go on because they do tend to, from my experience, have a, uh, a bad effect on my voice. Um, they may work for other people, but not for me, so I try and avoid those. I have been known to have a Guinness or several Guinness before playing. Not really found that that has any form of bad effect on my voice, so I've, I'm quite happy to drink that beforehand, but it's not advised to drink any form of alcohol before you sing. I also try to avoid milky things, milkshakes or milk in tea or anything like that. Um, that tends to really clack up, it's the easiest way to describe it. I hope you know what I mean, but it makes the, my throat quite feel quite sticky, which I'm sure it does anyone that has any milk and dairy products before they sing. Uh, chocolate as well is another thing that I do try and avoid before I'm singing. So yeah, I'll try and avoid all of those things before I go on stage, just make sure I'm warmed up enough um, to perform. So the type of gear that I'm using at my gig, I will go into a more de in-depth, detailed video about this at a later date. I still haven't decided what guitars I'm going to be using for the gig. I normally decide those either the day before, so I, i.e. today, um, or the week before the gig. I'll probably end up taking my Strat because it's the most versatile of my guitars and can work through most things. Um, I have been known to play the my Telly, which is what I'm, I was just playing on to show you that little exercise thing. Um, my Les Paul does make it to gigs most of the time, or some of the time, I should say. Um, so yeah, I will, probably decide tomorrow and see how I get on with that. But for this gig, I'll probably just take the Strat because as I said, it's the most versatile guitar and you'll probably see video footage of the gig where I'm playing something completely different tomorrow. So I'll probably, I'll see what 
mood I'm in tomorrow as to what I feel like playing. I always take my own microphone to gigs. I don't like and hate the idea of sharing a microphone that someone else has used. Um, I am a bit of a germaphobe in that sense. I don't like to share anyone's anyone else's viruses or anything like that that they've been spurting out into the microphone. I know it sounds really pretentious, but if there's one thing that I had to take to a gig, um, even if someone was providing me with a guitar for the night, I would definitely always take my own microphone because it is the one thing that you don't want to be sharing that. You might as well just stand there and kiss the person that's just been on before. Um, if you arrange that kind of thing, then fair play to you. But it's um, one of those things that, no, I, don't, I wouldn't share another microphone. If you are a musician and you do sing and you are worried about going to a venue and then saying, no, you're not allowed to use your own microphone, then seriously, get yourself one of these on eBay or Amazon. Um, you could just screw it on, make sure it fits an SM58. Most venues will supply you with an SM58, so you'll just be able to screw this onto the existing microphone and then you won't have to worry about sharing someone's germs that they've decided to just spit into the microphone before you go on, which is lovely. And um, I really don't understand how people can go on and do it and not bring their own microphone. It's the one thing if you are singing, that even if you got yourself a cheaper version or even something like this, a pop shield, to uh, to screw onto the microphone, then I don't understand why people don't do that. It's bizarre. So anyway, little tip if you are interested in that. I tried to change my guitar strings the day before, um, make sure that I've got everything in check. I won't really, I won't go for longer than I'd say three gigs on a pair of strings. Three gigs is kind of pushing it. It's really kind of, it puts me on edge when I turn up to a venue and I haven't changed my strings for a while, purely because I think, when are they gonna break? So yeah, I try and keep those uh, nice and fresh if I can, when I can. I take my pedal board along, use that sort of stuff as well. And I am currently using a Kemper profiler, which you would have seen in the B-roll before this. Yeah, the Kemper is just the easiest way for me to get in and out of my gigs at the moment. The types of venues, as I've said before, are quite small that I'm playing. So I don't really want to be lugging in a massive, not even massive, even a 212 and a head's not massive, but it's, that's 212 guitar cabinet and guitar amp head if you're not musically or guitar orientated. Um, even that can be quite sort of cumbersome and, and also it can take up a lot of room on, on a small stage, surprising. A hot rod, a Fender hot rod um, can take up quite a lot of room on a small stage. So yeah, I normally take the Kemper because it's sitting in the rack case um, that you should be able to see here. And everything fits in there. My in-ear system, there's a small mixing desk in there that I run a lead from the Kemper um, to that mixing desk and also a feed from the um, monitors into that mixing desk. I have my in-ears in there so I can hear myself properly. Um, there's nothing worse than bad monitoring at a gig. I did a gig uh, last year with the guys early on and unfortunately the monitors in the place were absolutely shot. There was only one monitor and it was on the other side of the stage. Everything was already set up and we were just about to go on so I decided to just try and wing it and see how I got on. Um, unfortunately it wasn't that great. I couldn't hear myself properly. So from then on I thought, well, I've got in-ears, I might as well use them. So yeah, I've always taken my in-ears to gigs. It's no inconvenience to the sound man because I am just running off of um, off of my own system. So I've taken a microphone as well that I plug into the mixing desk. I'll do a rundown of this properly. Um, and I have a microphone sitting on top of the, of the flight case that you just saw. And that microphone will then sit in the room. So I'll have a room mic so it sounds more open. Sometimes when you wear in-ears, it can feel like you are closed off and you're in a soundproof booth, which is great because you can hear yourself completely. There's no worries about listening to, or there's no worries about trying to fight over the noise of the band or the drums or the cymbals or whatever, or guitar or the bass. You know, it's a lot of the time it's low rumble and, and it's those low frequencies and really high frequencies that get in your ears and you're not able to to hear properly. And if you've got a bad or small set of monitors on stage that are just feeding you from the floor, then you're not gonna get very far with it. So in ears, I would highly recommend those. And also stick yourself a room mic in there as well. Some sound men are decent enough that they will be able to, to sort you out a room mic that, so that you can hear the room as well. It feels like you're in the room. Um, it's a tip that I got from uh, my friend Dave who has done sound in the past and he's worked with big touring bands as well. And he suggested that we did that for um, a singer that I used to be in a band with. So it was just something that I always thought, well, I'll try that out when I get my ears. And yeah, it works really, really well. It's like you're in, in the room with the band. Another tip if you decide to go down the in-ear room. If you have any questions or you want to know any more about any of these things, then please do send me a message. Um, my email address is right here. So you can send me a message through that 
or you can contact me through my Instagram, Facebook page, Twitter page. Um, all of the links should be popping up on the screen here right now. So um, yeah, I hope you uh, do get in touch. Make sure you head over to Anchor or Spotify and search for James A. Bennett on the fly. You can also head to my website, jamesabennett.com and the podcast is always there on the homepage. So I'm hopefully going to be upgrading my website soon. I just need to try and find five minutes to actually do it. It's something that's on my to-do list. And the background here should be different the next time that you see this room. I keep uh, tuning in if you're interested to see what sort of changes are, will be occurring in the background of this video. I'm sure you're riveted to know. So at the gig tomorrow, I'll be doing some light warm-ups to make sure that my voice is warmed up enough and in check. I'll also be doing some guitar stuff so that I can make sure that my playing's in check. I'll be trying to fit in vlogging at the same time while I'm there. And also I'll be sound checking and doing all of the other things and making sure that friends and family are coming along and are happy. So unfortunately you will be watching this when the gig has finished, but if you are around on the 19th of April, I will be playing a venue called The Workshop, which is under the road trip. It's on Old Street in London. Details are on my website under the tour date section or on my Facebook page, you can check them out there. And it would be great to see you there. It's on the 19th of April, which is Good Friday, so no excuse, it's a bank holiday weekend. You'll have the day off on the Friday, unless you work in retail or something weird like that where you can't get out of it because they've trapped you. But yeah, if you are free on that particular date, then make sure you come down. Uh, ticket links, etc. are on my website, again, under the tour date section. So please head over there and make sure you check that out. And yes, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, please check out my podcast. It's going out every Wednesday at roughly six o'clock. If you want to get in touch or you want to find out any more information, then make sure you head over to my website, www.jamesabennett.com. All of the information and contact details are on there. Links to my social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are on there. You can also find my podcast right there on the homepage. I will be updating that as soon as I've got five minutes. And also please subscribe to my YouTube channel channel if you enjoy what you're seeing please give it a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing and also make sure that you click that bell notification so that you keep updated every time I post a video thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you again next week with a full gig vlog from this gig that will be happening tomorrow and I will see you all again very soon take care bye bye